there are many of our people who are thinking more deeply and more broadly, are looking at it as it actually is, and are beginning to see it more in the international context and the relation that it has with the African uh, struggle, a human rights struggle, or the struggle for human rights. And as such, we can then take it into the United Nations. And bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. Peace family, this is We Charge Colonialism. WCC is an organization that is organizing to raise awareness of the colonial situation of Africans everywhere and also Africans in the United States, although they often don't acknowledge that the system that we face here is a colonial system. One example of how the colonial system operates, of course, is through a military occupation of colonized subjects. So before I get started with that, if you are interested in learning more about WCC, you can go to wechargecolonialism.org. You could also add yourself to our group by joining and submitting a membership application on the join tab. With that being said, let's get into this story. This article was written by Deja Rob, one of our writers, who is going to explain how Muhammadu Bihari is basically complicit with the global colonial system. She says, amid security concerns for West, Central, and Sahel regions of Africa, Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari, said, considering the growing security challenges in West and Central Africa, Gulf of Guinea, Lake Chad, and the Sahel weighing heavily on Africa, it underscores the need for the United States to consider relocating AFRICOM headquarters near the theater of operations. So let's slow this down and think through what he's actually saying. What type of person what type of leader would give a foreign government license to come into their territory, not just be in their territory, but set up operations for military exercises, not just in your territory, but in your neighboring African territories? Well, I'll tell you what type. That's a Western puppet. That's a neo-colonial puppet. That's what Muhammadu Buhari is. He bows to the United States like African leaders, presidents, do all the time. Unfortunately, though, his impl the implications of what he's saying could be catastrophic for many African people. The U.S. Africa Command is currently stationed in Stuttgart, Germany, but during the last year of Trump's reign, there was an incentive to get the headquarters moved to the United States, but ultimately that decision was futile. However, with Biden administration, people are trying to get for it to actually not just be um, and Germany not being in the United States, but actually be in Africa. It says, when Africa was established, it was only a couple months prior to Par President Barack Obama taking charge. This is a first president of African descent. Of course, he did nothing to eradicate the colonial presence in Africa, which is another reminder of why these representative some symbolic gestures by the power structure do not affect our liberation. It says, after leading a pan-African country, Libya that rejected Africa fell to it. Became open, it became open season, and now corrupt leaders allow Africa into their country frequently to operate freely, as well as assisting the military. The dream for Africa's full purpose is about to come to fruition sooner than expected or may just be it's um, on time with events occurring around us all. With allowing the organization into the continent, it allows the U.S. to control the land, resources, and labor, and it also serves as an enforcer and protector of U.S. multi multinational corporations. So this is something that's important to know, and I encourage you all to read the entire article. It's important to know that AFRICOM is set up to enforce the colonial presence, to enforce the United States strength inside of the African continent. I don't hear enough Pan-Africanists, I don't hear enough pro-African people rail against AFRICOM. In fact, Oddly enough, I hear them rail more against China than they do about the U.S. presence inside of Africa, despite the fact that they are doing things that are completely compromising the security and the stability of African countries. Let's be very clear where we stand. We stand against imperialism, we stand against colonialism, and we stand against the United States basically making African leaders bow to their power using military force. We have to organize against that. We have to be loud against that. And we cannot allow other things to distract us from the real presence that has the most implications of depriving our people of sovereignty. I will end this by saying, Kwame Nkrumah warned us repeatedly, we have to have our own independent military as African people. We cannot rely on imperialists, we cannot rely on colonialists to do right by our people. And until African countries can come together on one accord and ensure that they can protect one another without going to the West or anyone else to protect their territories, then they will always be beholden to their interests and they will always be unsafe.
Security is not going to come whenever your security comes so long as someone is gracious to you. Security comes through power and power can only be taken. So these are things to keep in mind. That's all I have. We will again see you in the next video.